set list is unique. Now, normally when you see a stand-up comedian perform, you're seeing them give you material that they have created, they have crafted, they have honed, they have perfected. We are going to give them a set list. They are going to improvise a stand-up comedy routine out of thin air. The comedians will see their set list topics at the exact same moment that you see them for the very first time. Ladies and gentlemen, the never before seen set list of the brilliant Mr. Matt Kershaw. Hey, hello the internet. <laughs> Uh, this is fun. Thank you for being here in the room. Uh, for those of you who are watching at home, uh, if you do choose to comment underneath our video, uh, just remember my mum reads them. <laughs> so, you know, maybe call her something as well. <laughs> She'd love to be a faggot. She would. She would love... She's a woman in her 60s, you know. There's no way she'd be as well-dressed as a derogatory term for a gay man. So, I did one of their shows on Monday, and yeah, that seemed to be the go-to. So uh, never read the comments. Let's see what you got. <laughs> one of the things that's nice about growing up in Europe <laughs> yeah, is how much more fancy things seem. It's the joy of coming to America as a Brit. You're like, everything just sounds that little bit nicer. Is it a burning sensation as you pee? Or is it a tingling fountain? You know, is it an unsightly rash? Or are you dappled? Speckled, if you will. Horribly, horribly infected <laughs> with a disease that's caused exclusively by sticking a part of a human in another part of a human. <laughs> or koala. <laughs> that's the only other species I know of that gets chlamydia. <laughs> that is a fact. <laughs> Most of these people are connected to the internet. Check it out. Koala chlamydia, genuine problem. So. <laughs> I'd like to point out, nothing to do with me. I don't, I don't necessarily want that association. I, I know how Google bombing works. I know it wouldn't take too much effort for it to be the case that when you start typing in my name, koala chlamydia is the next thing that comes up. But it's a risk I'm willing to take the internet. If you're in prison, I've never been in prison. But I'd imagine, if I were, I would be kneeling a lot. <laughs> yeah, there's very little that I could engage in. Maybe, I don't know, I could be a librarian. Maybe teach some of the fellow prisoners how to get through their prison degree. But we know that's not what my job's going to be. <laughs> I will... Ow. Best. I mean, I'd probably be on my knees in a cell. But... I'd maybe be able to find religion, find faith, go to the chaplain's room and be on my knees there. I wouldn't escape it, is what I'm saying. I, you don't want to be in prison with the face and cheekbones of a choir boy. <laughs> which, I, which I have and will always have. I think I could be like 70, grey and balding, and I'll still look like a sort of withered choir boy. <laughs> I'll look like a choir boy with a wasting disease. <laughs> you know, those diseases, it's like, I don't know, it's that genetic condition that very few people have, but where they look... 60 from the age of 12. That's, that'll be me, age 60. It'll be me and the real thing. We could tour together. And I'd be in prison with that. I don't know why I'd be in prison. There are very few things that I'd be willing to do that would put me in prison, but... We've all killed a man. <laughs> we've all done a bit of murder, right? No one's watching this. This isn't a confession. Next topic. There must have been, 
There must have been some sheepish ones. There must have been some, like, there must have been some closet. Like, I think once you got to the mid, mid to late 30s in Germany, you're pretty much, like, it's harder to not be a Nazi than to be a Nazi, right? I think, you know, people mostly went for the whole Nazi thing. But there's got to be a few, like, at the beginning, you know, late 20s, early 30s, where there'll be, like, one guy who's all proud. He's like, Carl oh, Hitler, and he's doing... I don't, I was about to do the moustache, but I don't think they did the moustache. Uh, <laughs> but they'd be doing like the thing and there'd be a couple at the back who were like, oh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Just sneaking their way there. One day, one day I'll have strength in numbers. <laughs> For the moment, I'm just gonna hate them lot from a distance. <laughs> I'm gonna hide there and just it's quite adorable until you do the full salute, isn't it? <laughs> I'd never realized how lovely, like until you, like once you full up do the whole straight arm and throw it right up, then that's like, no, that's bad, that's unpleasant. But just a little bit of the way, it's kind of... <laughs> you know, if you go a little, go the full way and it's full on whole Hitler, but you just go a little bit, it's like, cooey, you know, <laughs> kind of adorable. It's, it's the way you'd, you'd wave to like the daughter of your neighbor. That's the difference. Just a slight flex in the arm and a wiggle. That's all it takes. That, that's the difference between genocide and adorable. <laughs> I was raised Jewish. And... No, I can't, I can't do Nazi and then instantly go into anti-Semitism as well. I can't do that in a row. Re-engaging. It's got to be... It's a bit suspicious that we all lose our teeth. <laughs> it's a little bit suspicious, isn't it? Supposedly it's so that bigger teeth can grow through, but... Do we really need the bigger teeth? Like, I... I think... I think I would do perfectly well with... The, I've got quite big teeth. And I don't think they need to be this big. I think if I just had the original lot, I'd look fine. <laughs> I don't think it's evolution that is responsible for us having the second set of teeth coming through, the first half leaving. I don't believe in God. I don't believe in Santa. But I once put a tooth under my pillow. And when I woke up in the morning, that tooth was gone and money was there. Explain that science. <laughs> Yeah. Explain that, Professor Richard Dawkins. <laughs> if that is your real name. You explain that. Some stuff you can't work out. Occam's razor. Likeliest solution is the most... Happened. <laughs> it's the exact wording, including that pause. Go to the Oxford English Dictionary, that's how it happens. Maybe not Webster's, maybe not in America. Oxford, it's got that awkward pause. Go to Oxford Dictionary, that's the definition. Occam's razor. Most likely solution is, mm, happens. That's <laughs> how we do it. It was in Britain, more adorable. We already proved that. So, no, what's more likely? That there's a genetic, there's an evolutionary reason for one row of tooth, teeth to leave and another row of teeth to grow in? Or that there's some weird imp? <laughs> some freakish smaller than average, semi-magical creature that wants children's teeth for a reason. We just tell our kids this. We tell our kids this, that that's the, that's fucking horrible. That is a awful thing. If you think, no, not adult teeth. They just want children's teeth. The tooth fairy, there's only one thing and it specifically wants the teeth of children. Once you're over a certain age, its teeth are of no interest to you. <laughs> the children's teeth, they do it just for a ritual. Just so... I'd like to imagine the tooth fairy lives in some building that's made entirely of children's teeth. That's, I've never got that noise out of people on stage before. I've been doing stand-up for a while and I've never said something that's actually got people to go... 
That was a visceral reaction I got off there. That was as if at one point in your childhood you actually went to a building that was all children's teeth. <laughs> and I just stirred up a horrendous memory and now you're gonna have to go to counselling and it's my fault. <laughs> well, you'd have to write it in blood, wouldn't you? <laughs> I guess if you were, like, if you were a... If you were a graffiti artist who is a bit sad, <laughs> well, more than a bit sad, you have to be very sad to commit suicide. If, uh, if you're a bit sad, don't commit, don't commit suicide anyway. If you're watching this and compliment, contemplating suicide, I mean, I shouldn't be the one to tell you this, but <laughs> like get help, okay? Don't, I hope I've cheered you up a bit. <laughs> I hope I haven't stirred up a memory of you being in a house of teeth. <laughs> and that was the final straw. But go open a different tab. Stop watching us for a second and go to this plenty of help things. But if you do insist on it, <laughs> if you've really made up your mind, and I mean really, but still get help. But if you've really made up your mind, make an effort. You know, there aren't enough adventurous suicides these days. If you draw, draw something pretty with the blood as your... You know, you've got a limited amount of time, so don't go too adventurous. We're not talking <laughs> Sistine Chapel here. Maybe something funny so that when they discover you, they're like, ah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> like a rabbit with a massive cock and balls or something like... <laughs> just in blood. Just something that makes them go... Well, this is sad, but not as sad as it could be. <laughs> it's what he would have wanted. A final little giggle. <laughs> just, and they'd all come up, and then, like, the person would hear that noise. they go like, what happened, what happened? And they burst in as well and do exactly the same thing, one after another. Including, and then the ambulance guys as well, but they've probably seen it before. Listen, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Enjoy the rest of your show. I've been Matt Kirshen. Thank you, the internet. Matt Kirshen!